Hey, welcome to edX World and another video in the IGCSE accounting series. Till now, we've covered most of the topics in the syllabus and the videos are there in the playlist. You can watch them, they are in order. After covering the syllabus, I've also covered some examples on structured questions. Again, you can watch them also. Today, I thought I will make a video on multiple choice questions, only multiple choice questions. And as you know, the Cambridge board has increased the number of multiple choice questions to 35. The entire paper one will be only on multiple choice questions. So I thought I'll do a video exclusively on MCQs and show you how to solve MCQs. So when you see the questions, you may pause the video for a second and try to solve it. Play the video, see if the answer matches, understand my explanation. On an average, you should take one and a half to two minutes for each multiple choice question. So let's begin this video. The first question that I have for you is the business bought a machine for $5,000 and depreciated it by 20% in one year. At the end of year two, the total depreciation was $2,000. Total depreciation, keep in mind, this is not the depreciation for year two only, this is total depreciation. Using the concept of consistency, how much depreciation will be charged in year three? You should know that consistency states that whenever a business selects a method of depreciation, and rate of depreciation that has to be consistently applied in all future years as well. So if I calculate the year one depreciation, which is 20% of $5,000, we get $1,000, which was depreciation for year one. And as per the question, the depreciation at the end of year two, total depreciation was $2,000. So it is obvious that the depreciation for year two, not the total, just the annual depreciation for year two would be year total depreciation till year two minus the year one depreciation. So $1,000. Since depreciation is $1,000 in year one, $1,000 in year two, it is obvious that the business is following straight line method at 20% rate. Now the question is how much depreciation is charged in the year three and answer is also obvious the, the business would continue charging depreciation 20% rate at using straight line method on 5000 so the third year's depreciation will also be thousand dollars and hence our correct option is option c the next question is the trader has paid an insurance in advance at the end of her financial year she deducted this amount from the insurance paid during the year to calculate the total insurance cost for the year which accounting concept is applied. If you've not watched my video on accounting concepts, please, please watch them. I will be giving the links to many of my important videos in the description box. So you should know all of these accounting concepts and then only you can either eliminate the wrong answers or directly select the correct answers. If I talk about business entity, business entity speaks that the owner and the, ent the, owner and the business are separate entities. It has no connection to this question. So A is not the correct answer. Matching or accrual concept says that expenses should be properly matched with the revenues based on the year in which they are actually accrued or actually incurred. So the question is actually based on matching principle. Anyways, we will also see option C and D, eliminate them and be sure that B is the right answer. This is the way that you have to do. Let's say you know that uh, an option is the correct option, but I will still suggest you to go through all other options and eliminate the wrong options also. Because at times, one of the options might look correct, but some other option could be a better answer and that would be the correct answer actually. The third option is money measurement. Money measurement states that only transactions that can be measured in terms of money should be recorded in the accounts, not related to this question. And realization is about when to record the revenues in the books, again, not related. So our correct option is option B, matching. Which document from a supplier reduces the amount owned by a customer? So the supplier is issuing a document to a customer and that document should reduce the balance that the customer owes to the supplier or owes to the business. Firstly, a supplier would issue an invoice when the goods are sold. That will increase the customer's balance because the customer will now pay a higher amount to the supplier. But when the customer returns back the goods to the supplier, the supplier issues a document which is known as the credit note. And hence credit note is the right answer. This credit note will be used to record entries in the sales returns journal. Ultimately, the customer's balance in the books of supplier will reduce. 
Talking about other documents also, de debit note is a document that is issued by the customer when the customer intends to return the goods. No, by the way, no entry is made uh, based on the debit note. You should know that. Invoice I've already explained. And statement of account is issued by the supplier again to the customer, but at the end of the month. And it is only a summary of all the transactions that have happened during the period. So the correct option is A. A shop selling office furniture purchased a desk on credit. The desk was not sold, so the shop decided to use it in its own office. It was purchased using, uh, it was purchased assuming that the goods will be sold to the customers, but ultimately it was used for own purposes. In which book of prime entry were the adjustments made? When the furniture was originally purchased, thinking that it would be sold, obviously the entry would have been made in the purchase journal. But later when the furniture was not sold to customer and it was used as an asset in the business, the journal book or journal entries would have been used to make the adjustment entry and remove the amount from the purchase journal or the purchase account to the asset account and hence B is the correct option. Cash book is only used when cash and bank entries are involved. Purchase journal is when goods are purchased on credit and purchase returns journal is obviously when goods are returned back to the supplier. X returned faulty goods to Y, the supplier. What are the entries in Y's books? Y is the supplier who supplied goods to X, the customer. X has returned goods back to the Y. Now, if you read the question, the question is termed or question is stated from X's point of view, but they are asking you entries in the books of Y. So this is where students get confused. Even though the question starts from X returned faulty goods, you have to think from Y's point of view because ultimately they are asking what are the entries in Y's books. So for Y, it was a sale and when X returned the goods, it was a sales returns and you should know that the when the customer is returning back the goods, the sales returns account is debited and the customer's account is credited. So the correct option is option C. Purchase return is out of question for Y. This transaction is not a purchase return. So A and B definitely no. And D is also no because sales returns account is never credited, it is only debited. The total sales of a trial balance, okay, this is not sales, the totals of a trial balance were debit 46,800, credit 39,700. The following errors have been discovered. So two errors have been discovered and finally they want you to write down the correct trial balance total. Here, there is no scope of elimination or there is no scope of guessing. You do your calculation and Take the correct option. So let's do a calculation. First, we will write down the totals given in the question. 46,800 under debit and 39,700 under credit. Let's read the error number one. Rent received 3,550 has been included as a debit balance. You should know that rent received is a credit account. So when this was included in the debit balance, the debit side is overstated by 3,550. So we will subtract that from the debit side. And obviously, we'll have to add that on the credit side because it is a credit balance. The second error says that the cash received from K Greener was credited to B Greener. So basically, the amount was credited to an incorrect customer's account. This will not affect the total of the trial balance, even though it is an error in the accounts, but it does not affect the total of the trial balance. So no impact on the totals of the trial balance. Let's take the totals of debit and credit side. So we get 43,250 and also 43,250 on the credit side. So our correct option is option C. The balance of the discount allowed account $200 is entered on the wrong side of the trial balance. This is the only error. Which suspense account entry will be will make the trial balance total agree? Now the balance of discount allowed $200 is actually on the debit side of the trial balance, but this was entered on the wrong side, meaning the credit side of the trial balance. See when the uh, discount allowed is not entered on the debit side of the trial balance. Obviously, the debit side is short by 200 or is understated by dollars 200. And when the incorrect amount is entered on the credit side, which is 200 is entered on the credit side, it means because of this error, credit side was over by dollars 200. It means the total difference between the credit and the debit was actually dollars 400 and the debit was less than the credit. So the to match the trial balance or both sides of the trial balance, suspense account would have been opened and the suspense account balance would have been entered on the debit side of the trial balance. 
When this error is rectified, found out and rectified, to close the suspense account, we will have to credit the suspense by 400 because it was opened as a debit balance of 400. So the correct option is option B. A machine is purchased for $15,000. It is to be depreciated at 20% per annum using the reducing balance method. What is the charge for depreciation in the third year? Again, pay attention, charge for depreciation means annual depreciation for year 3. They are not asking you total depreciation till year 3. So let us do the calculations. The initial cost of the machine was $15,000. Year 1 depreciation at 20%. 20% of $15,000 if you calculate, you will get $3,000. The netbook value left at the end of year 1, $12,000. Since this is reducing balance method, the rate is always applied on the netbook value. So year 2 netbook, sorry, year 2 depreciation at 20% would be 20% of 12,000, 2,400. When you deduct the year 2 depreciation, you get a netbook value of 9,600. Again, we need year depreciation for year 3, so we need to apply again year 3 depreciation at 20% of net book value. If you apply 20% of 9600, you will get 1920 and the correct option is option C. The financial year of X ends on 31st December. In May of year 1, X paid rent of 2400 for the period of 1st May to 30th April. What will be the amount of prepaid rent on 31st December of year 1? In, it means in, in the year in which rent was paid on 1st May. See, when the business pays a rent of uh, 2400 from 1st May to 30th April of next year, it means it has paid the rent of 2400 from 1st May to 30th April. But in between this period, there is an year ending date on 31st December. So, you need to see how much period is being covered before 31st December and how much period is being covered after 31st December. So if you calculate the number of months before 31st December is coming to 8 months and the number of months coming after 31st December before 30th April comes to 4 months. So basically whatever is the rent paid for these 4 months after 31st December until 30th April will be the prepaid rent on 31st December. So we just need to calculate the 4 months rent. So 2400 which is the annual rent divided by 12 months, multiplied by 4, dollars 800. So our correct option is option B. A trader has 2000 units of stock, of which 100 units are damaged. So the remaining 1900 units would be good or would be normal. So total stock is 2000 units. Let's divide this. So we have damaged of 100 units and we have normal or good products of 1900 units. Each unit costs dollars 10. So the cost of the damaged units is dollars 10 and the cost of the normal product is also dollars 10. The selling price of normal unit is dollars 20. So we can say that the NRV is dollars 20 for normal products and the expected selling price of the damaged unit is dollars 12 after the stock can be repaired at a cost of 2.50 per unit. So if you remember the definition of NRV, NRV is the expected selling price minus the cost necessary to complete the production and also to sell the product. So the NRV of the damaged product will be 12 minus 2.5 dollars 9.5. Recollecting the inventory valuation principle, inventory will be valued at cost or NRV whichever is lower. So the value of inventory for damaged would be 100 units into 9.5 because NRV is lower than the cost. So 950 for damaged and for normal it would be 1900 units into cost because cost is lower than the NRV so 1900 into 10 dollars 19,000 so our correct option is option D here so I hope this video was useful I will be coming up with more of such videos multiple choice questions and structured questions so if you've not yet subscribed to the channel please subscribe please please press the bell icon also and if you enjoyed this video, please like this video, help me reach maximum students. So I will see you in the next video.